Hey guys, Justin here with JKS Manufacturing. We're down here in the Tech Center getting ready to install another one of our products. Today in the Tech Center, we've got this 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon, um, and we're gonna install a set of our ACOS uh, on this Jeep. So this install is gonna be the same for a JL or a JT. So let's just get right into what's in the box, what comes with the kit, and get them on the Jeep. So in your ACOS box, you're of course gonna get a set of instructions. We'll be following those step by step. Uh, a little bit of JKS swag, and the most important part, the ACOs themselves. So as you can see, we've got the bump stop, the adjustable, and then the, the rotatable collar. So let's get right into this install and, uh, and see what it takes to get these on this uh, Gladiator. To begin with this ACOs install, we need to get this spring and shock and sway bar, all that out of there just as if we were installing a lift kit. So we're gonna speed up through this because you've seen this before. We've already got the wheels and tires off. We'll get that spring out of the way and we'll get right into the meat of the ACOs install. Okay, folks, so what we've done here is we've got the spring out. And how did we do that? We loosened up this bracket that uh, holds the brake lines from the control arm. We, uh, we took the sh lower shock bolt loose, and we also disconnected the sway bar link. And that allows us, you know, on the hoist, we raised the hoist up, and, and that separated the spring. But in your garage, you would just lower the, the jack stand or the, the jack under the axle, you know, out from underneath it. That's going to droop your spring out. So what we're going to attack next is we're going to get this bump stop out of here. We're going to start taking a look at what it takes to install the ACO. So we've got an isolator up here and a bump stop. Both of those got to come out. And then uh, we'll be uh, maybe doing a little bit of cutting on a brand new Gladiator. Okay, so for those of you that have bought the ACOs for your brand new, you know, really, JK, JL, JT, even the TJ guys, XJ guys, all that, you're like, man, why do I got to cut to install that? It seems pretty straightforward. Well, here's why we have to cut to install that. This can't slide up over here. It's just too much, you know, meat and potatoes in there. So we're gonna have to cut this back uh, right around this weld here is where we're looking to make our cut so that this piece can then slide up over there and create our adjustable spring space. Right. So if you're following along in your instructions, step two that's preparing the spring retainer, pinch weld is talking about the weld seam and the factory bump stop holder. That's this right here. Camera guy will get real zoomed in. We wanna be real clear. It's got a little dust, but. That's that weld seam right there. We're gonna cut just above that. We wanna save as much of this as possible. We're gonna cut just above that on both sides of the vehicle. All right, so for those of you following along at home, here's the weld seam, okay? And as you can see, I cut above that a little bit. And the reason why is because there's a little extra in there. So it's a little bit above, you know, what is that, half inch or so. And then uh, here's, our, here's our pocket. We're gonna go around that with a file, clean that up and deburr it so that our ACOs can slide right over it. All right, so you might be tempted to skip this step and just jam the ACOs on there, but when we cut something with a Sawzall, we're gonna end up with these little rough edges and stuff on there. And while you may be able to smack that ACOs on over there and get it on there, it's never gonna be right. You're never gonna be able to remove it. So let's just take the time, get a nice file, and we'll just clean that up a little bit. Okay, so once you think you're done filing, what we're looking for is a nice clean fit up. Right there, nice clean fit up, we are good to go. The ACO slides all, you know, right over that. All right, so we've got our ACOS unit just about prepared for install. This Jeep uh, in particular is just going to use the ACOS as a leveling kit, which is a great option for these JT Gladiators. But if you'll read in your instructions, if you're not doing at least a two and a half to three and a half inch lift, we need to cut an inch off of this threaded tube. And the reason for that is, is so we can get enough space between where it's installed and the bump stop to actually get good movement and suspension travel. We don't just want it to hit the bump stop. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that inch off now. When we do that, it is going to lessen the amount that this can be overall adjusted. You know, it's going to take an inch away from, you know, a final adjustment. But be, again, because this vehicle is only getting a leveling kit, this owner is just fine with that. We just want the leveling kit portion of it and maybe to be able to tweak the ride height if we ever put a winch on. So here we go. We're going to cut this off. Yeah, just a little quick tip because play with these ACOs from time to time. If it feels like He-Man himself tightened up that ring and you can't quite get things moving, um, you know, before you beat on this with a hammer or get all aggressive, something with a wedge type tip right in that aluminum and look how easy it just rotates off there. Just get it started. So these things, they get assembled and this get pinched a little bit. And uh, so all we gotta do is loosen that up and it'll, it'll thread easy. 
right, guys. So I've got to cut this tube, right? And uh, it's it's really hard to get a straight cut, you know, just by hand, or at least for me. Maybe it's just for me. But uh, one of the ways I found is to give myself a guide. So I just grabbed a generic worm gear hose clamp and uh, lined it up with my mark, and I'll use that as a guide to make my cut around this tube. That way, there, it's nice and straight. All right, so now we've got the, uh, the threaded body of the ACOs trimmed. Um, we've got our end piece uh, back threaded on, and we've actually installed it onto the spring. This is a very, very tight fit, okay? It, it is a very tight fit. And then from here, we're able to now put the spring up into the chassis of the Jeep. For that, we're gonna go ahead and use a spring compressor. You do not have to. You can uh, drop the axle down further, but we'll be going ahead and using a spring compressor for this. All right, folks, so uh, we've got our spring sitting in there, and we're going to say this is the preliminary setting of the spring. Hard word to say preliminary, evidently. Um, so what we want to do is we're focusing on the end of the pigtail on the spring and the end of where the pigtail ends on the spring seat. And then also on the ACOS itself, because we need to have access to that pinch bolt, we want to rotate that so we've got that where we can now get to the pinch bolt for making adjustments on the ACOS. So, Couple of things we checked, again, we did the uh, spring seat, you know, making sure we're aligned right there, and then the pinch bolt for the ACOS. Yeah. All right, so we've got our spring fully seated in here. We've got access to the pinch bolt. The winding is where it's supposed to end here. Just putting our shock back together, so that's my uh, 18 millimeter wrench and socket. And then uh, we'll get this brake line back on, and when we finish the other side, we'll go ahead and do the uh, sway bar link. <laughs> So on the passenger side of the vehicle, we've got the FAD, which is a front axle disconnect. You'll hear people reference it as the FAD. Um, this little connector can be a little bit of a thing, especially if you're laying on your back in your driveway, so we'll try to take a real good video of this. So we're going to pull this white tab out here. See how it popped out of there? Then we're going to push it down and disconnect. So no big deal. Um, I'll do that again just so that we can get a good view of it. This is one of those things that is a little weird. So we're going to pull this tab out. See, it came out, and then I'm going to push it down and then disconnect. Uh, be careful, this stuff gets brittle and you know it breaks or whatever, and I'm sure the dealer would be happy to sell you one. So uh, just be careful, but that's how that comes apart. Rotate. Bingo. All right, so there we go. We've got both sides of the ACOs done. Um, we're, we're leaving this Jeep at the minimum height, um, but we've got, you know, a, a solid two and a half inches of adjustment just by taking the, uh, the tension off the spring, rotating the, uh, the ACOS. Let's not forget about shock length and things like that. You know, all the other things that go along with raising the ride height of a Jeep. You know, this Jeep really should have a quick front end alignment or at least a check up and, and, uh, and probably send to the steering wheel because we did raise the front at least an inch and a half. Um, but that gives you a kind of an, an idea of what we're looking at for the, uh, the ACOS install on both a JT and a JL. So please, as always, if you have comments or questions, don't hesitate to comment on this post. Message us at jksmanufacturing.com. Um, you can hit us up on Facebook and Instagram. We're always there, always responsive. We love to hear those tech video ideas from you. So as they come, you know, come to your mind, shoot them over to us, and, uh, and we'll make a tech video for them. Thanks for following along. Boop.